Designing and launching a website or landing page that does not convert is going to be time and money wasted. Now here are five tips that you can implement right away into your very own website or landing page design to increase those conversion rates. Let's get into it. Whoa, but before I reveal these five tips to you, I genuinely feel like it's a very fair trade if you gently smash that like button just once for five free tips to help you increase your conversion rates. Now my very first tip for you is to laser focus on the customer pain points. Remember, when someone first lands on a website or a landing page, that area above the fold in the hero section, the copy, the headline, and the images you use will really help you decide whether or not you are going to get the interest of this customer. Because if you put up there and it's not clear what you offer, you're not motivating the user and the images aren't quite relevant, they're going to bounce from the website. So make sure use the headline real estate to really target the pain points and frustrations that the customer will face so you motivate them to want to explore a little bit more. A great practice is use Notion which is a free no code app and if you want to invest down it you can also pay and upgrade your membership but use this tool to create a Kanban board. Now, what you wanna do is, in one of the columns, brainstorm all the pain points and frustrations that a customer might face, and then reprioritize them based on how severe you believe they are based on the customer. Now, once you have the reprioritized list of pain points, focus on the top three. How can your company or your business or your service help a customer solve those top three pain points? Now, here is an example. Let's take a look at Buffer's homepage. I'm sure many of you guys know what Buffer is, but if you don't, it is a tool that allows people to manage multiple social accounts and also the schedules of all the content posting all in one place. Now, you might see that the headline simply says, simpler social media tools for authentic engagement. To be honest, I don't think this is motivating at all. The only reason why I would vest down Buffer is because they've got a good brand, they've been around for quite some time and people would have referred me over to this website. But what if we change the headline to struggling to keep up with managing multiple social accounts, right? We're targeting what does the customer actually feel? What are they frustrated about? What has motivated them to come to Buffer.com? What if we tried falling behind schedule on all your social campaigns? Once again, this feels a little bit more motivating because you're actually targeting the pain points of the customer and you're not just talking about the features or what feature set you were providing the customer. People are motivated by pain and suffering and frustrations. They're not motivated by the features of a website. Now my second tip to you is to think about how do you craft an irresistible offer? When someone lands on a website or a landing page that you're designing or you're launching, what can you provide them so they can't say no? It's so irresistible, it's exactly what they want and they can't say no to it and they're going to commit. For example, if whether you are a freelancer, you're a service provider, you're an agency or you're a SaaS platform or you're a product company, what can you offer? Is it a free audit of a website if you're a freelancer? Is it a free branding strategy and discovery service if you're an agency? Is it a free 30-day trial if you're a SaaS platform? In other words, a software as a service platform. What can you do to give a taste or give a sneak peek to a potential customer or client of what you have to offer and then once they've stepped into the room, you close the door and you tell them, cool, now that I've got you, this is what we can provide you and you show them all the value. And once they feel and experience the value, they're most likely to commit and they're most likely to actually move forward because now they, they trust you. So think about what is that irresistible offer that you can provide. Now my third tip to you is use design to turn whatever product or service you have into a tangible asset. Now what do I mean by that? Take a look at King Kong. They are a marketing agency based in Melbourne, Australia. They do some incredible work. They're around 100 people in their company. But if you scroll down onto their website, down the landing page, you will see that they give away an irresistible offer, a free report that you can learn a lot about the work that they've done, how they might be able to help you. And not only that, it's not just a subscription form. They've designed a thick book that says you can learn all this. There's a lot of value in this. All you have to do is sign up and you get access to this thick value. 
And for me, it makes the offering a lot stronger. Once you turn something that's sort of just a concept into something tangible, even though it's just design, when you perceive it on a website, it makes it just a little bit more credible and it also will increase the perception of the value of the product or service that you are offering. The fact that they've made it really thick feels like there's a lot of value in it, a lot of information packed into it. So this is definitely something that you should consider in your designs and landing page as well. My fourth tip is to humanize your company, your brand or your portfolio. People resonate with people. People find trust in other people. People don't just trust in an office. There's nothing to trust in just an office. It's the people in the company, the people that I get to work with that really make a company one that I want to work with or buy from. So if you just take a look at Airbnb, they are a place and a website where you can book accommodation. They could simply just be taking photos of the actual rooms or the accommodation places, but they have decided to build trust and integrate trust into all their design decisions, their brand and the platform as well. So compared to booking.com where it's just photos of beds and rooms, Airbnb has carefully crafted trust into their photography by having real people in their photos. Not only does this build trust in Airbnb, but it also builds trust in the hosts themselves because now you can build and resonate with the people in those photos and it tells a little bit more of a story, but you also feel a sense of safety and trust, belonging and community on their platform because they have sprinkled people throughout all the different design decisions that they've made on their platform. Now, another example is Shopify. Shopify is a SaaS platform, a software as a service. Now, they could simply just showcase the interface, the UI designs, the cool interactions on their platform, but no, they actually use photos to bring through a human, that to bring through the human aspect of their product, showing real people utilizing and engaging on their products and interfaces. This helps people imagine and resonate with the product and imagine themselves using it and sort of subconsciously seeing other people using it. Well, I can then imagine myself using it as well. Social validation is also a key part in taking photos carefully with people utilizing products. So whatever you can do, whether you're a freelancer, show your face, get a photo of yourself on your portfolio. If you are a startup or a product or a SaaS platform, what can you do to get people into the photography, into the design to help others and potential customers imagine themselves using the product that you own or you're trying to promote. Now my fifth and last tip is to create urgency through scarcity. The concept of supply and demand applies in every aspect of our lives. Just remember, when you are giving away something for free, people will tend to not respect it and they will tend to not really, really care. Now, once you start to create scarcity and you limit the amount of people that can actually get access to it, whether it's free or it's paid, you're forcing people to work a little bit harder meaning that they are committing a little bit more work and effort into it and they're actually feeling a little bit more invested into your product or service. Now once that happens, people will naturally care a little bit more. And once people care, that means you've already got your foot in the door. All you have to do is pull them in a little bit more. Generally when people start to give things out for free or they don't really limit and create scarcity, People will think it's always going to be around. They can turn up to your business or whatever it might be whenever they want and they feel in control. Once you create scarcity, people will feel like they've lost control and they want to gain that control. That is just basic human instincts. A very good example is Robin Hood, the trading app with zero fees attached. Now, when they first launched, they had an insanely well strategic and planned out pre-launch campaign. When they launched into new countries, they would have a wait list and, all, and you have to apply on the wait list to get access to their product. They knew for a fact that they had a lot of value because a lot of trading platforms obviously had fees. They had zero fees, so they knew that they had value. What they wanted to do is create scarcity so people would feel compelled and feel impatient and actually want to use the product. When they created scarcity, this created urgency and more and more people started to join the waitlist and trying to refer more friends so they could jump higher and quicker in the waitlist as well. This created virality and this allowed Robin Hood to generate a waitlist well over 300,000 people in each waitlist for every single country. So remember, when you have good value and you combine it with scarcity to create urgency, 
Not only are you going to be successful, but you are really going to get people eagerly waiting, very hyped to use your product. And that is what you want. You want people to get excited so they tell more friends and your product or service will start to get well known and start to told to other people as well. So remember, whether you are a designer, marketer or founder, if you are launching a new landing page or a website, yes, looking good and looking great and looking beautiful is good to have, but you really need to think about how can you implement tactical business strategies into the design, into the website, into the landing page to really help you excel forward? How do you create desirability? How do you get people urgently waiting and eagerly waiting to really get into your product? How do you get people excited? Because remember, if it looks beautiful, but I don't feel motivated emotionally, I'm not going to want to discover, I'm not going to want to learn more, and it will just look like a beautiful landing page to me. Now, hopefully you found this extremely useful and there are takeaways that you can implement right away. Now, you've made it this far. If you haven't already, please subscribe and gently smash that like button to really help tell the YouTube algorithm that you enjoy this content. And if you want to follow for daily tips, make sure to follow me on Instagram. The Mizco is my username and I will be sharing and I normally do share daily tips about design, freelancing, business, startups, all the good stuff that helps you make more money and makes you become legendary. Oh, and make sure to leave a comment below about other things you want to learn, feedback and all that good stuff because I love hearing from you and all the people that watch these videos because it makes it real for me. Wow, you've made it this far. If you want to support me and you want to support this channel, I do run a paid mastermind group where I bring together designers, software engineers, and anyone that's ambitious and want to really achieve and be successful in life. We all come into the Slack channel, we all talk about business, we talk about design, we talk about growth, and ultimately, I bring everyone together in a live Q&A on a Zoom call where we can all ask questions and we all learn from each other. So if you wanna check it out, I've left a link in the description below. It's called the Mizco X Group, it's Mizco exclusive, and there will also be a link at the end of this video. So if you wanna support, feel free to. If you don't, it's all good. I'll see you in another video very soon.